welcome to this pan following tutorial part 4. In this tutorial I am going to show you how to do a follow me type of carousel in that each of the images will be following the one before it. And this is the tutorial or this is what I'm going to show you how to create. We're going to end up with a uh, carousel ending like this. And we're going to start with it looking like this. Now what you need to know is you need to select all of your images. You need to set them up with the same uh, scale. It makes it a lot easier because you need to know, since it's a horizontal carousel type of thing, you need to follow, find out how wide each of the images is, is so you can figure out the total distances between each of them and how they're going to appear in the screen. I want it to end like this. I want it to start like this. So what I do is select the images I want, set the resize, I set them to the size that I want, and the order that I want them in. I've decided that I want the direction of travel to be in this direction, so all the slides are going to go to the right of the screen, which means that all the uh, slides after A will be adjusted to the left. Now, I use fill frame. You can use anything you want, but the fill frame is a uh, scale that allows the image to, uh, for most images anyway, it allows you to scale the image to the uh, to the width of the screen. It's normalized to the width of the screen. So, if I set a image to 25, a, a zoom of 25, its width is going to be 25. If I set to 75, its width is going to be 75. So. In my case, I'm taking three landscape images and three portrait images. The portraits are going to be two to three aspect. The landscape are going to be three to two. I'm setting the portrait images at 30% zoom and the landscape images at 68% zoom. And the reason for the 68% zoom is because it gives a height that's roughly the same size as the portrait images. Now, this dark box here represents the screen. The small box in here represents the image that's going to fit on that screen, and it's roughly corresponding to this here. Now, what I want to do is subtract 100 from uh, subtract 68 from 100. That tells me I have uh, unused space on that screen of 32%, which is 16% here and 16% here. Since this is evenly spaced, then these should be evenly spaced, which lets me put the next image right up against the edge of the uh, screen and then I'll use 16 for each of them there so this is going to be space 16 percent wide this is going to be 16 percent behind this one E is going to be 16 percent behind this and so forth now the way that I figure out where the actual positions are after I've given uh, given the uh, notional view here is I'm going to add the half width of this screen or this layer plus the half width of this layer plus the distance between the two of them. Now I'm going now when you move uh, when you position an image or position a layer it's always with reference to its screen center. Well there are some some um, exceptions to that general rule but uh, right now for all practical purposes, we're going from center to center, so that's why the half width plus the half width plus the center. Since I'm going to the left, then I have to use a minus number because to the left in Poro Show is negative. So I'm using negative 84. So this is going to be a negative 84 and 0. By the way, all y axis letter uh, 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 positions are going to be 0 for this. Since it's only the x axis that's going to change. Now, layer C is going to be minus 84 plus the half width of the previous layer, plus the half width of it, plus the distance between the two of them. So that's another 84, and that's going to be 168. D is going to be positioned at the, uh, the minus 168 plus the half width of C, plus the half width of it, plus 16, and would do the same thing for E and F. Now, the distance between each of these is going to be 302 because that's the distance from the center of this layer or center of where we're starting to the center of where we're ending. 
So we're going to add 302 to each of the um, uh, values for keyframe 1. So 302, so for, for keyframe 2, for F is going to be minus 325 plus 302, and that gives me minus 23. Minus 279 plus 302 is going to give me 23. And the same thing for minus 233 plus 302 is going to be 69. For C, it's going to be 134. B is 218. And A is going to be 302. So that gives us our keyframe 1 and keyframe 2 setups. Now, if I were to reverse it, I'd have these other numbers as well here. But let's set it up now. Layer 1 is where we're going to start. Now layer 1 is going to be, start at keyframe 1 is going to be at 0. Layer 2 is going to be minus 84. So we put minus 84 here. Layer C, we've already calculated, it'll be minus 168. D is minus 233, and so on. Minus 279, minus 325, and then we'll set up keyframe 2. And it's going to be minus 23 for F, 23 for E, D is going to be 69, C is going to be 134, B 218, and A 302. And so, what we've got here is this. Again, I'll just play it. We start out with the widescreen. All of them are following evenly behind. And that's it. Uh, let's do this for the modifier version of it. Now, we have already determined that for uh, the total distance that each of them is going to travel is 302. So I'm going to set keyframe 2 here for this first layer at 302. Keyframe 2 is now 302. And keyframe 1 is going to be 0. Now let's go to A. We're going to add a modifier. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the pan follower modifier for the layer previous to layer B, which is layer A. When we do that, the center for layer B is now on layer at uh, the center of layer A. I need to offset it to the left by the distance, or the half distance of layer A plus the half distance distance of layer B plus the distance I want them to be separated by each other. So I'm going to add a, uh, an action and subtract it. I'm going to add an uh, another action and subtract it. Now the first one I'm going to do is 16. That's the distance between them. The next one I'm going to do is the uh, addition of the two half widths. Now I could put these both in the same uh, action if I wanted, but this helps make it clear for you and saves me from doing some math. Now, we'll do the same thing for layer C. Layer C is going to follow the pan X of the layer before it, which is layer B. I'm going to subtract, uh, add two subtraction modifiers, or uh, actions. The first one is going to subtract the distance between the two layers, which is 16. The next one is going to, since layer C is now over uh, B, I need to also subtract not just the distance between them, but the half width of B and the half width of C, which is 68. Now we go to D. We add the pan X modifier to have it follow the uh, layer, the pan X of layer before it, which is layer C. The center of layer D is now on layer C, and I need to move it to the left, so I need to add 15 plus 34, which is going to be subtracted out, which is 49. And I'm going to subtract out the distance between the layers, which is 16. Then we do that for each of the other two layers as well. And what we have is the layers going off to the right. Now, the nice thing about the modifiers is it makes it very easy for me to reverse the direction. Now, right now I've got 302. 
at, as keyframe 2. But what if I put that at 0 and make keyframe 1 3, 0, 2? In that case, I start out with what was at the end, and now everything moves to the left. And what was starting is now ending. Okay, there you have it. That concludes this portion of the briefing of the uh, presentation. So uh, stay tuned for some more information on another way of doing this. Uh, follow me tutorial. Just a different approach to the modifiers. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.